Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at this iCovewalk digital multimeter. So this was provided to me by the distributor, but they're not compensating me for this video and they're not reading it before I post it. If you find this video helpful and you want to purchase one of these, I'll put a link to it in the description on Amazon. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So if we turn it over, it says, please remove the caps on the test leads before measuring. When it shows the low battery indicator, please replace the batteries in time in case of any measurement error. Okay, so let's open this up. We have a contact card here. We have a user manual. So that's the thickness of it. And it looks like the whole thing is English. So it has safety things in here. So working with electricity can be dangerous. You want to make sure you follow all the safety things and they may not all be listed in here even, but if you're not sure what they are, make sure you research that before using this. So here we have the different functions of this. So I will pull this out so we have a reference to it. So here we have the leads. It comes with two AAA batteries. I'll open those up. Let's look at the back here. So it has a stand that folds out and we need a screwdriver to put the batteries in. So I'm just going to use a number two Phillips screwdriver to open this up. The screw kind of popped out a little bit. You don't want to lose that. And here we have the place to put the two AAA batteries in. So I'll do that. So this has these little tabs here that push in there. So it only has one screw to hold the whole thing in. I'll put the screw back in. Okay, so now we can power it and we have a little plastic coating on the screen. So I'll pull that off. Okay, so let's see if we turn this on. Okay, that works. So I'll get back into the manual so we can look at the features of this. But on the Amazon description, it says it measures AC DC voltage, DC current, resistance, continuity, diode, and battery accuracy. So in the manual, we have the LCD display here. We have the function buttons, the function knob, the COM input. So that would be your black lead goes in the middle. We have the other measurement input socket here on the right. So that's your main one. It's called other, but then the other one is the 10 amp current input socket. So if you're measuring DC current, you'll hook up to COM and 10 amps. If you're measuring other things, you'll hook up to COM and the other measurement input socket. So on the back, we have the test lead holders with the back cover and the battery compartment. So let me do a little close up of this. So this is a hard plastic here, but this outside is a soft rubber type material. So you can see how flexible it is back here. So these leads would fit right in here like so. So that'll give it some impact resistance. And then of course we have that kickstand there so you can put it up like that. So if you're working on something, then this can make it easier to read at this angle. So this is a true RMS meter. So here it talks about the function key. So let's see if we can turn this on to some mode. It says press the key, enter data hold mode, cancel data hold mode. So if you take a measurement, it will keep it there. So if you're measuring something where you can't quite read the screen, you could hold it. But then if you just press it for two seconds, It'll also turn on the backlight. Let's see if I can show what that looks like. So here you can see the backlight. Now I do have the ambient light on above my head, but if you're in the dark, you'd be able to see the screen with that backlight. So I'll hold that down again to turn it off. So that's a nice feature. So this will automatically shut down after 15 minutes if there's no operation. So that'll help preserve the batteries. If you turn this on while holding down the function button, it will turn off that auto mode. So if you do need this to stay on for more than 15 minutes, let's say you're monitoring some voltage. Say you have a camera on here, like you're recording it with your phone. You need it to not turn off after 15 minutes. You can hold down that button while you turn it on and it will turn off the auto shutdown. Let me zoom in here a little bit. On the right side, we have DC voltage. On the left side, we have AC voltage. Here we have resistance. Here we have amps. This would be a battery tester here for 1.5 and 9 volt batteries. And you can see the range here. This is 600 volts, 200, 20, 2, and 200 millivolts. So on the AC side, we have 200 and 600. So I'll plug in my leads here. And then it said to take these caps off. It's probably pretty obvious to most people, but if someone's new to metering or if they're not paying attention, they might leave those on. Let's see if I can get any voltage out of this here. I don't know if this will actually work. We'll see. You're not seeing anything. Let me switch this. Okay, so here we're seeing 123 volts. So say we can't see this screen, I can put this in here. And when I put these in here, like I said, if you don't know what you're doing, don't do this, but I need to make sure I don't touch the open part of these leads. But I'll put these in here. Let's say I can't see this. It's pointed this way. I can press Press that hold button, take the leads out, and it will have held the value. I can press it again and it will reset to zero. So this is rated at CAT 3 600 volts, and that's AC or DC. So this will do DC measurement, so that would be good for automotive applications or electronics. And then we have resistance, which would be good for, you could use that for automotive, appliance repair, electronics, things like that. And I'll probably grab a resistor and I'll show that. And I think that's everything. So here are some accuracy specifications here you can read through. You can pause the screen and read through those. Here's resistance. As a diode test and continuity test on it. Okay, so let's try the continuity mode. 
which is the same as the diode test. So that's the beep you get. Okay. So I'll go grab a resistor and we'll test measuring a resistor with this. So this is supposedly a 10K resistor. So we'll switch this to 20K and we'll measure it. And we got 9.91. So there is a tolerance on here and that's within the tolerance of this. So that's good. The resistor, when it's a 10K, it may not be 10K. So this is probably much more accurate than the resistor. So I do have a battery here. Let's test the nine volt battery here. So the smaller terminal is the positive. There's the negative and I'm not getting anything there. Let's try 1.5. We got 1.54, okay. Here I have a bunch of nine volts. Let's try all these, see if anything comes up. One's got 2.75 volts. There's 8.4 volts, 5.55. So the middle one may not be bad. I had these off screen here, sorry. But the other ones are not great. So we can also measure DC voltage. I don't think I've demonstrated that yet. So let's go to two volts and we can measure the battery here. 1.608 on that. And then we'll go up to 20 volts to measure the batteries. So we have 4.88, 6.56, and 9.09. .09. So on the battery tester, it says the 1.5 range load resistance is 30 ohms. The nine volt range load resistance is 300 ohms. So when you're doing the battery test, the difference is it puts a load on it. So I just installed some trailer wiring on one of my vehicles. So let's take this out there and check that trailer wiring with this, as that's a real world application for a meter like this. Okay, so I'm out in the back of my vehicle and I've installed this trailer wiring so I can pull this open here. This one's spring loaded, but I'll turn my meter to volts DC and I'll go to 20. Oh, and before I do that, I want to mention I kept messing up on this. I was calling this the function button here, this hold. This is the function button, and that's used when you're on the continuity diode, and you press that, and it'll switch between the modes there. So let's get back to voltage. I'll go to 20 volts. I have my probes here. I'll open this up, and then I can measure things. So these two across from each other should give me 12 volts. I had them backwards, so I will hold on to those. Actually, I'll just show this at the meter. And here you can see we have 12 volts get this out of the sun here. So there we have 12 volts and now I'll go around the other terminals. I have the hazard lights on so we should see some flashing here. So you can see the voltage is going up and down and that is the flasher. I think that might be the right turn signal. And this I think is the left. So we have the same thing here and here. So that's just one of the many applications for a meter like this, is checking trailer wiring. Now to do the full test, I'd actually have someone go in and hit the brake, and I'd get my wiring diagram out so I knew which terminals are which, and I'd test every function. You can buy things that plug into your trailer to check the wiring. They have lights on them and such. But this isn't something I do daily, so using a meter is the optimum way to do it so I don't have to buy another tool. Of course, you can check your battery voltage with this. You can hook this up to the tain amp probe here and look for parasitic loads. You can check fuses, other things with it. So that's the Ikovwuk multimeter. I really like the size of this. It fits nicely in the hand and it has that rubberized coating on it, so it feels very durable. It has lots of features on it. It has the features you would expect in a basic multimeter. It has the AC-DC resistance and such. I like that it has the backlight and the hold function. A lot of times when I'm working on something, like if I'm fixing an appliance or something, I might be behind the appliance and it might be dark. It's nice to be able to turn that light on so you can see it, so you don't have to have a second flashlight pointing at your meter. So if you're looking for a basic meter to do things like home repair, automotive repair, and such, I think this is a great option. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.